Hey, this is Python trainer Reuven Lerner. A subscriber to my Better Developers newsletter recently asked me if I could talk about bitwise operators. So here I am to talk about bitwise operators in Python. Before we can do that, we have to understand how binary numbers work. And in order to do that, we have to understand how decimal numbers work. So let's start with that. If I have the number 1, 2, 3, 4, we know that's an integer. Integer 1, 2, 3, 4, 1,234. In elementary school, at least I learned, that you can break this number apart. This really means, the way we would say it is, four ones and three tens and two hundreds and one thousand. All right, and if we say that, it sort of makes sense, right? We're just sort of breaking the number apart. How can we express that numerically? Well, I can say it's four times one plus three times 10 plus two times 100 plus one times 1,000. And sure enough, if I do that in Python, I get one, two, three, four. So far, so good. But there's another way that I can express that. And that's realizing that when I'm saying times one, times 10, times 100, times 1,000, I'm actually using powers of 10. And I'm doing that because we are in the decimal system. So if I say here four times 10 to the zeroth power, which is one, plus three times 10 to the first power, plus two times 10 to the second power, plus one times 10 to the third power, guess what? It's exactly the same, one, two, three, four. So when we're using decimal numbers, base 10, we're simply saying this you know, 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 to the two, 10 to the three. Now we normally use decimal numbers, but computers don't. Computers at their heart use binary numbers and binary numbers are in base two. That means they don't use the digits zero through nine, rather they use the digits zero and one and everything is to powers of two. So if I say 0B1101, that is the number 13. How can that be? Well, let's break it apart. Say 1 times 2 to the 0, plus 0 times 2 to the 1, plus 1 times 2 to the 2, plus 1 times 2 to the 3. And that works out to be 13. So what you can see is we've broken our number apart. And again, we're going from right to left here. That's the way you have to do this if you're gonna work with these sorts of numbers. So we can think of the number 13 as one three. We can also think of it as the binary number one one zero one. Okay, so how does that help? How does that work with things? Well, if you are working with binary numbers, then you might very well want to do all sorts of binary operations, bitwise operations on them. Now this is pretty rare, I would say, in modern high-level programming languages. But low-level programmers do this all the time, and there are actually reasons to want to do this. And it is built into Python, so we might as well see how this works. So let's say I say here, x equals 1, 0, b, right, for binary, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And y is going to be 0, b, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now, what if I say x plus y? Well, what is x? And what is y? So you can think of it this way. We can represent that number 203 either as 203 decimal or as 11001011001011 in binary. Clearly, it's easier for us to think about in decimal terms. But we have a few different operations we can do at the binary level, the bitwise level, that can be useful. So first is bitwise and. And we use the ampersand for this. So if I say x plus y, what is that real, or not x plus y, x and y, bitwise and. So how is this going to work? Well, bitwise and says, I'm going to take each of the digits here, and wherever both of them are 1, I'm going to get 1. So 1, 1, yes. 1, 0, no. 1, 0, no. 1, 0, no. 1, 1, yes. 1, 0, uh, no. Yes. And if we check, that number that we get back is 137. Guess what? If I say x ampersand y, I get back 137. That's how bitwise and works. So you can take two integers. In fact, you have to take two integers and use bitwise and on them. It's not going to work on any other sort of data type. But what's happening behind the scenes is that these numbers are basically being treated as binary numbers and the digits are being anded together in that way. And the result is what we see here. What about bitwise or? We're going to use the vertical bar. And the same way I can like copy this here. And what's going to happen here? Well, in bitwise or, if either of them is one, then we're going to get a 1. So I'm going to just make this line up a bit. I'm going to say here 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And sure enough then, 
the number we get back is 239. Well, guess, guess what X pipe Y is? 239. So once again, bitwise or means if either of them has a bit that's turned on, either of them has a one bit, then it's one. So that, that makes it you know, sort of more, more probable, I guess, that we'll get a one there. There's another thing we can do, which is bitwise XOR. For that, we use the caret. And XOR means if one of them is one, but not both, then we get one. And that's not to be confused with if one of them is one, we get one, right? So exclusive OR, XOR means one, but not both. And of course, AND means if both of them are one, we get one. So how is XOR going to work here? Well, let's copy once again our X and Y from before. And I'm now going to say, well, what? I'm going to make this line up. Both are ones, we get zero. One is one, we get one. One, zero, zero, one, one, zero. If I did this correctly, I got one, zero, two, X, X or Y, one, oh, two. So that's how these bits line up. And by the way, you might be thinking, where in the world am I going to use X or? Well, first of all, all these bitwise operations, all these bitwise operations are really things that people in high level languages tend not to do very much now. But you can use these things here and there. For example, let's say you have a bit field, right? You might want to have a bunch of different yes, no flags. And you might want to say this is on, this is off. So you could have them in a whole bunch of different true, false, Boolean values in Python, right? So, you know, first choice is true and second choice is false and third choice is true. You could certainly do that. Or you could squish it all together into a binary number. You could say here, choices equals 0B101. And now how would we get out the first choice? Well, we would use a bitwise and. I would say here, first choice, you know, user wants first choice. Well, actually, let's just do this. I'm going to say here, choices, bitwise and, 0B100. And we're going to find out that it's four. Huh? For what's going on? Well, what's happening here is I'm saying, give me an and, a by bitwise and with that number. So these are the user's choices. And I'm saying here, use a mask. Tell us, you know, only let the first choice bit through if it's there at all. And sure enough, we get four. Well, it's going to be zero to four. That's what we're going to get. That is what's in that position. So basically, if you get a number back, number four here, then it must be true. If you get a zero back, then it's not set. And so if I say choices, ampersand, and let's do zero B zero one zero. So now, and that's not max, that's mask, right? So is second choice set? And we'll get two if so, zero if not, and we'll get zero here. And choices, ampersand zero B zero zero one, right, is third choice set. And here we'll get a one if so, zero if not, and we'll get a one. So this is how you can use bit masks. Where do we actually see this in Python? Truth be told, we see it in one place that I can think of offhand. Info, let's do just do a print hello. If I define a function here, the code object actually has CO flags. That is, if we look at it, a bitwise number that's used to determine all sorts of different things in our function. And you can, I have a nice talk about this from PyCon 2020 called the Function Dissection Lab. You can look at to understand what the different flags are and how they work. One or two other things we might want to look at in terms of bitwise operators. First of all, there is bitwise not. So if I have 0B, well, so actually just look at X. So X is 203, and the bitwise version, the binary version of X is that. So we might think, and a normal way to think about not, which is tilde, so bitwise not is, we think, tilde. That's tilde, and I know it's hard to read in my font. I'm sorry about that. So if I say here, not x, I get back minus 204. All right, what the heck is going on here? So this turns out to be a little more complicated. This is not actually bitwise not. Bitwise not would mean we're going to turn all the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones. But it turns out that integers in Python are actually signed. And this would only work if we had unsigned integers. So really, really what's happening is that we're always going to get end up with the negative and then minus one of whatever, whatever we give. So if I say not of one, two, three, four, I'm going to get 
minus one, two, three, five, right? That's one less. What if I say not of minus one, two, three, four, I'm then gonna get positive one, two, three, three. So it's gonna switch the sign and then it's gonna go down by one. Um, what can you do? I should add that all these bitwise operators can be overloaded. So you'll see them in different sorts of places. For example, in NumPy and in Pandas, the bitwise and, bitwise or, and bitwise not are used when you're working with your NumPy arrays and with your pandas, either series or data frames. So it's not because we're doing bitwise operations there, rather it's because those operators have been forced, coerced into use for other things. One other set of operators that might actually come in handy uh, is the bitwise shift. So if I say here, here's my X, well actually let's do this, bin of X, and I say X, less than less than one this is not a question is this less than one or not this is actually an operation i get back 406 406 what the heck does that mean well let's look at the binary of 406 and the binary of x let's just compare them do you see what's going on here basically you can see that everything was shifted right so basically here let me let me do this i'm going to take here this right and what if i add here, what if I take off a zero? So now we have what? We have one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. Okay, Why? Well, wait a second, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly 203. And if I have here zero, I add a zero to the end, I get 406. So when I did shift left, this means add a zero to the end of the number. So if I say X here, so bin of X is that, here's my number here. Let's just check this. All right, so now I'm getting 203. If I add a zero there, 406. What if I say x less than less than four? Well, that means I'm gonna take my x. Once again, let's just get this, make sure I've got it right. And I'm gonna say here, we're gonna add four zeros, one, two, three, four, and sure enough, we get that number. So you can shift left, you can shift right also. I can say here, x greater than greater than two, and that gives me 50, why? Because if we take the binary version of x, once again, I'll cut and paste a little bit. And now what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of the bottom two bits. And now we're going to get 50. That's exactly what happened there. Now, I want to stress, how often have I used in my career actual bitwise operators? Almost never. But at the beginning of my Python training career, I actually said to an entire classroom worth of pe full of people, and of course, no one actually uses these operators. And all of them kind of yelled at me. Why? Because they use these operators every day because they are actually low-level embedded software people. And they're trying to save memory, and so they're using bits all the time. And they're checking bits, whether it's in the operating system or the file system or elsewhere. So people like me who do web development, high level, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, data science stuff, analysis, applications, you'll probably never use this sort of bitwise stuff. But if you're doing lower level things or trying to save on memory or just trying to work with, say, Python functions, then you might very well do so. I hope that this was uh, useful and interesting. Don't forget that you too can subscribe to my Better Developers newsletter. I hope you will join me there free every week. Submit questions to me on Twitter or via email, and I'll be happy to answer more questions about Python in this channel in the future.